the things that you're likely to do with your SQL 2008 and SQL 2008 R2 DVDs is to slipstream them. So you know what a slipstream is, right? This is when you take the original DVD that you bought from Microsoft or the original ISO image that you downloaded from MSDN and then you apply the patches directly to that image so that when you install SQL Server 2008 or you install SQL Server 2008 R2, it's already updated, okay? So this is definitely something you want to do if you're going to be worried about, I need to be able to reinstall SQL Server very fast, okay? So I'm going to walk you through the steps. It's fairly convoluted. Uh, there are a lot of steps, and I have a few ancillary files that go along with this video that are attached with this video that are go you're going to need to walk through them with me to understand exactly what they mean, do, and how they help. Okay, so let's get started here. What I've got, I have a SQL Server DVD. Okay, so when I take a look at that, it's your standard DVD. Now, I can't write to the DVD. I can't write to my ISO file. So my first step is going to be to copy to a hard drive. Okay, so I'm just going to go zoop, right click, copy, and place them somewhere on a hard drive, right? So that's going to be step one. Don't worry, um, you don't have to write these down as I go through them because I've got a document that we're going to step through. I'm just kind of walking you through it right now. Now, I have this done already. I have a folder called SQL 2K8 R2 SP1. So what I want to do in this video is I want to slipstream, one word, no spaces, slipstream Service Pack 1 into my SQL Server 2008 R2 media so that I can have a DVD that when I install it already installs Service Pack 1 for SQL 2008 R2. Okay, So I've already done this hard part. Okay, Now, that's step one. Okay, Now step two, you have to go download the Service Pack files. This works for cumulative update files as well, but in the interest of speed I'm just choosing Service Pack 1. Okay. So I have downloaded the three main architectures, right? You've got your uh, x86, x64, and IA64. Okay. So go download those and get these. Now you may not realize it when you look at them, but these are self-extracting archive files. So what we now need to do is extract these to a folder. Now, you can't really right-click on them and say extract. It won't do that. But you can actually address them from the command line and use the slash X. So we could actually just go to that and say uh, slash X. Oops, sorry. And it will extract. That's what that's going to do. Okay, We can tell it to extract. Okay. Now, I have built a... So, step one, by the way. You see how this says step three right here. Okay. Step one, copy your DVD to a folder. Step two, download all the service pack files. Okay. Step three, extract them. Okay. And here's what we're going to do. I like to use batch files so that I don't goof it up. So here's what we do. Let's just take a look at what ours is. I'm going to put all of these in a single folder called SP1. So yes, I'm extracting all three of them to the same folder. They will be, they were, there will be a set of shared files, and then there will be an x86, x64, i64 folder within this. Okay? Now this is going in the same location that I had copied my DVD to. Okay? Now I like to use little variables here so that if I need to change it, I don't have to copy and paste. Okay? You can do what you want. Okay? So notice that in my folder where, the, where I copied my DVD, there is no SP1 folder. So let's go back over here, run this, step three. It's extracting it. Okay. You can see it's coming from X64. Now I didn't have it turn off the notification that one is complete. I like to know, this doesn't take long, um, but you, I'm sure you could probably set this into quiet mode. Uh, but I like it prompting me, I like it telling me. This is not something that I do so often that I need every single piece automated. So we'll let it do that. Uh, when we're finished here, oh, it's almost done. Then we can go back. We told it to put it in a folder called SP1. 
sure enough there it is with the three architectures in it. Okay. Now you see in this SP1 folder that we have another setup.exe. Step four, again, don't write all this down. I've got the steps delineated. We'll, I'll show you. I'm going to copy it. Okay? And I'm going to replace the original setup from the DVD with this new bootstrap. So here we say paste and copy and replace. Now step five, we're almost done here. Okay? There's only two more steps here. Step number five is to then refresh. You see how at the root of the original RTM image, there already is an IA64, X64, and X60, X86 folder. We need to replace the files and folders in these folders with the SP1 versions. Okay? So that's what we have to go do. Okay? So I'm going to go tell it now to do that. So if we take a look, for example, at the X64, you can see all these files. So here's what we do. Go back over here, got another batch file. I'm going to use RoboCopy. Uh, this is built into your Windows 2008, Windows 2008 R2 OS. And I'm going to tell it to copy. Here's my base folder. That's where we copy the DVD. Okay. And here's the patch folder. We extracted all of our patches to that. So we want to go to the patch folder, to the x86 folder, and we want to copy all of those files to the base folder x86. And yes, we want to overwrite those silently, but we want to exclude a file. Notice this particular DLL. Okay, we're going to exclude that file in all of these. Okay. So we're just going to repeat this for each architecture. Okay. We're basically overwriting the files that were on the DVD with the files that are in the patches. So let's go ahead and run that. It won't take it too long right here. Uh, that actually was too fast. What did I um, I've messed something up? Just trying to see where I've potentially messed up here. Uh, it should have taken longer than that. <laughs> um, let me see. That's let me diagnose here. What I will do when I get into stuck uh, situations like this, I'll drop down to the command line. And I'm hitting shift and tab, and that cycles through all of the folders and files. So I'm going to go ahead and run it, and I'll see what it says. It says I'm doing something uh, wrong here. Uh, let's see. Where's the error? So skipped one directory, skipped 84. Here, uh, 84. Okay, well, it's going faster than I I thought it was. I thought I thought it was going to take it actually a little bit longer uh, to do that. Uh, we can now verify. Uh, well, one thing we have to do. Step six. I have to go down into the actual these folders right here. I need to tell these folders that your new source is in here. So I go down here and I, oops, sorry. Um, I need to go into each of these. So I64, I go to this file called defaultsetup.ini. And in here you'll see some basic INI stuff. So here's the key for SQL Server 2008. Here's the product ID. And it's going to embed your product ID right here. You can leave that or you can remove it. If I take this out, then it prompts me to do evaluation edition. Thing. But I need to change this to say PCU source, all capital letters, equal, no spaces, open your double quotes, dot, because that says root, slash, SP1. Don't close with a final uh, backslash, and then go ahead and close. So PCU source, that's my, uh, that's where I've extracted these from step number three. Okay. So I just add that, and I close it and save it. And I do that for all three architectures, not in the SP1 folder, okay, but in the actual root folder. So same thing. So I just copy and paste. Okay. Go to each one of them. And that's it, really. Now I am uh, I'm ready to launch my setup, and it will go through. And I'll show you where you can actually see evidence of this. Unfortunately, it doesn't 
show it doesn't like change an image or anything to say SQL Server 2008 R1. Um, it doesn't like my product key, right? <laughs> so what I can what I have to do in that case is go down uh, to my default setup I and I and just remove it. Okay. And once I do that, it picks it up from my architecture and we're able to see it. Now I have a document while this is going through that's attached with this video. It's called overview.txt and this is the six steps that's required. So let's, let's go through. Can't tell at this point that we're slipstreaming. I'm going to hit the setup button. I'll come back to uh, the slipstreaming overview here. Uh, there. So step number one, copy your DVD to a folder, download your service packs, extract your service packs or your CUs, so cumulative updates, okay, to a folder. I went ahead and named it SP1 so we could have something to talk about, okay. Replace your original setup file. Update the RTM files using the robocopy file that I've attached and change that default setup.ini, okay. Uh, and uh, let's come down here, keep going next. Make your choices, whatever, again, you don't see it didn't install my product key. So make your choices, choose what you want. We'll just say I want to do that. And now under the installation rules, we'll actually be able to see whether or not we did it correctly. Okay. So coming down here, look at right here. This is right there. Update setup media language compatibility. Okay. It passed, so then we're okay. Right? If we have a failure, if we didn't do step five or six correctly, we will not pass through this point. So we'll just do something chunky. I mean, I'm not, I don't really care about this. I'm not going to install it uh, and or I'm not going to keep it around rather. So we'll, uh, I have already the SQL agent and I have the SQL server from the previous uh, here. And blah, 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 add current user, Windows, fine. Um, go through here. Let it go through and do the installation. When we're finally finished here, we'll see the summary. But look right here. Look at that. There's your slipstream evidence. Okay. And in the summary, it will also do that. I'm not going to go through and do that. I don't need it. I just wanted to show you how to do this. Uh, I want to, if you get stuck, okay, Here's a great link that walks you through the exact same steps that I did this from. So there's no ambiguity. You won't have any trouble with it. Works great. Takes you probably all of 10 minutes to do it all.